for Web3 as a whole, I think if you solve identity, you've solved the biggest single problem in all of the internet. In an interview with Google Tech Talks, macro analyst Raul Pal discussed the conundrum we are facing in the global economy. On one hand, a deep recession looks imminent as issues with the central banks and inflation, which Raul believes will become deflation, energy crisis, and geopolitical conflicts in Europe provides a bleak outlook in the near future. However, on the other hand, the emergence of crypto technology, Web 3.0, and other disruptive technologies provide a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Raul concentrated his thoughts on the optimistic outlook of the world and revealed some of his current ventures, which he hopes is laying the foundation for what is to come with crypto. Raul believes big companies such as Google will be forced to the adoption of crypto to solve the many problems of today. Raul believes that now is the time to get in, where the little guy still has a shot at creating massive wealth either as an investor or a crypto entrepreneur, because in 6 to 12 months, we should see massive movement in the crypto market. But before we listen to Raul, if you're new to the channel or not subscribed, make sure you subscribe as we put out daily content to keep you updated on the current market and news. First, we need to clear up this macro situation that we talked about, mm -hmm. right? Because nobody can deploy capital. I mean, everyone's either cutting staff or lowering their budgets. And so, so what, what I'm seeing is every large corporation, anybody with brand, community, or any of these is working hard, like you guys are, on figuring out what does Web3 mean for us. Mm -hmm. Some people are super far advanced. Like, you know, a lot of people don't realize Ticketmaster has issued more NFTs than any company in the world, 10 million NFTs. So there's people already catapulting, but all the big Web2 players are involved. Everybody in the financial system is involved. Everybody. And they, I mean, Goldman's been involved in this since 2015. Mm -hmm. So you just don't see it really because they're cautiously moving forwards because of regu regulatory issues. But everybody knows that this is where it's all going. So we're seeing, I've never seen anything like it personally it's kind of a little bit like the internet but it's just as i said faster paced and actually larger in scope which sounds crazy but it is because it accrues value itself to these protocol layers mm -hmm. so there's this massive value accretion that comes so if i compare where we are now call it a trillion dollars of asset valuation in in digital assets well almost all the traditional asset markets are two to three hundred trillion each mm -hmm. We're going to get there in probably 10 to 15 years. I mean, this will be the fastest accumulation of value the world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Fastest and largest. Bigger than oil, bigger than the internet. It's just a, it's a very, very different thing. It's, it's, it's quite the phenomena. So the point being is as soon as the macro clears up, everybody from you guys, I mean, we've already seen Meta are moving further along, faster than launching stuff. Yeah, everybody's going to launch and yeah. everybody's going to be putting capital and don't forget like you guys and everybody else everybody's investing in vc in this space already so mm -hmm. everyone's going to first look what's happening where is it going how do we get involved so the vc money of 60 billion dollars that went in in the last 18 months because of the speed of the cycle in crypto we're going to see a whole lot of products and new changes and new innovations coming uh, in the next six to 12 months. And we'll move the whole narrative forward exponentially yet again. So I'm interested in two levels, which is why I started those two businesses, exponential age asset management. Every investor in the world is going to invest in the sector. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's probably something like half a percent or a quarter of a percent or something of people's investments, and it's gonna get much larger. So how do you capture that? That's why I started an asset management company that invests in uh, digital asset hedge funds. Okay, so that's part of the trend. Much like, again, you guys at corporate level through the VC arm will be investing in VC companies, so you're capturing the trend. The other thing is the big light bulb moment for me was realizing that tokenization is going to unlock intangibles on global balance sheets. So what do I mean by that? Intangibles are things like brand and community. I think as McKinsey put intangibles at about $60 trillion on global balance sheets, how they count that number, I've no idea. And again, however, mm -hmm. however wrong it is, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. The point being that tokenizing 
brand and tokenizing community is going to put this on the balance sheet. So every firm is incentivized to do it, which is why you guys are looking at it because you actually, it actually becomes a way of, of tokenizing community or network effects. Mm -hmm. So if you think of it in these terms is Disney is a $250 billion company. They're probably the most culturally relevant brand on earth. My guess is they touch more people. I think everybody's got a Disney story, whatever age group you are, you know, Disney, Disney has a part of your life, whether it's, you know, in whatever function, what is that worth? If you were to tokenize the various sub franchises like Marvel or, or even Mickey Mouse or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. What is that all worth? Disney is a brand. Could Dis Disney have its own currency, essentially? Could you have a social token and NFTs? All of that combined is probably a trillion or two trillion. That's not even on their balance sheet. It's not even yeah. valued that way yet. So I'm really excited about the tokenization of culture. Mm -hmm. Culture is the thing that we are all involved in at scale. We all live our life. It defines us as human beings. What are the big cultural identities? Music. I'm a big music fan. Music is a cultural identity that we have. Secondly, fashion. Fashion is a cultural identifier, something people are passionate mm -hmm. about. Thirdly, sports. You know, that's it's so tribal, so cultural. Yep. Um, and finally, probably movie, TV, book franchises, that kind of stuff. Yeah. The other two, I would say, would be politics and religion, but I probably wouldn't want to get involved in tokenizing those. But Star, <laughs> yeah. Star Magic Studios, the business I've set up, co-founded, the mm -hmm. job is to help giant corporations with giant communities tokenize this culture because like that, that is a huge unlock. To watch the full interview, check out the link in the description. What do you think of Raul's thoughts here? Do you see big moves coming in the next six to 12 months? Leave a comment. If you found value in the content, hit the like button. It only takes a second, but it really helps the channel find similar viewers like you. If you're new to the channel or not subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button as we put out daily content to keep you up to date on the current market and news. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.